Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, FDA Validator Rules version 1.6 Explained. My name is Michael Beers, and I'm going to give a somewhat quick overview of what has changed since the previous version of the FDA Validator Rules, which were from March of 2021. Just as a quick introduction, I'm a consultant or a subject matter expert here at Pinnacle 21. I help our clients use Pinnacle 21 Enterprise, and I'm part of the team that manages the validation rules and versions of the standards. I also work as a data fitness analyst for both CEDAR and CBER. And then just a quick disclaimer, Basically, I do not speak for the regulatory agencies or standards development organizations in any way. I'm presenting on the behalf of Pinnacle 21 today. Okay, the, the, the agenda for today's webinar, um, I'll start with uh, an introduction about an overview of validation and where you can find the new FDA validator rules. And I'll show a detail, the details of the changes from in the new version of the, the validator rules compared to the previous version, 1.5. I'll discuss how you can ensure that you're compliant with the new version of the validator rules. And then I'll go over very quickly what you would do with the validation issues you get once you do validate your data. This is a section from the FDA study data technical conformance guide where they define data validation as a way to ensure that the study data are compliant, useful, and will support meaningful review and analysis. At the agency, validation occurs at the time of submission, checking against the ECTD technical rejection criteria, and then also at the beginning of the, the regulatory review. Compliance to standards and controlled terminology, as well as having high quality data are very important because the goal is to always automate as much of the processing and analyzing as possible, which allows more to be done in a shorter amount of time. Validation is a key piece to make that happen. This again is a section from the FDA's technical conformance guide showing the different sources of the validation rules that we have. First, there are rules provided by CDISC. So when CDISC publishes new versions of the standards, in most cases, they provide CDISC conformance rules that specify exactly how the data should be checked for conformance to that new version of the standard. The next type are the EC to D technical rejection criteria, which specify the validation criteria applied when the FDA processes new submissions. These are mostly stable, not changing often. Then there are the FDA business rules. These describe the business requirements for regulatory review. FDA validator rules are then the actual detailed checks run to make sure the business requirements are met. And this slide shows where you can find the FDA validator rules. They're provided on the FDA study data standards resources page. And then you expand the number four section for the FDA business and validator rules to find a link to download the rules. Now we'll move on to the actual changes in the new version of the FDA validator rules, version 1.6. The Previous version 1.5 was published about a year and a half ago. So 
So these are the, the columns in the FDA validator spreadsheet at the top of my screen, in the, in the blue at the top. You can see the different column names. On the far right, they did add three new columns. This is one of the biggest changes to the validator rules, the addition of these three new standards. So the first new standard is Send IG version 3.1.1. This was added to the FDA's data standards catalog in February of 2022. And in that document, date support begins again in February of 2022. For this standard, the, the rules that go with the standard are from CDISC conformance rules for SEND version 4.0, which was published in July of 2021. The next new version of a standard added to the FDA validator rules is SEND IG animal rule version 1.0. This was added to the FDA data standards catalog back in 2020. Date support begins is listed again as 2020. And for this standard, there are no corresponding CDIS conformance rules. And this does have somewhat of an impact that I'll mention in a few moments. And then Send IG DART version 1.1 is the last version of the standard that was added. This was added to the FDA data standards catalog in March of 2021. And that's when date support begins, March of 2021. And then this standard corresponds to the CDIS send conformance rules, version 4.0 again. There were 118 new validator rules added. Four of these new rules were added specific to send IG version 3.1.1. Again, from that CDIS send conformance rules version 4.0. 61 new rules were added specific to send IG animal rule version 1.0. This is the standard that has no corresponding CDIS conformance rules, which means that most of these rules have no publisher ID since there was no CDIS conformance rule and there's no FDA business rule. There is no publisher ID to add. These rules are mostly added to check variables and data sets and even parameters that were introduced in this new version of Send IG Animal Rule. But again, no publisher ID is available for most of them. And then 20 new rules were added specific to Send IG Dart version 1.1. The other 33 new rules were added for a specific need or rules just not previously included. Examples are medical device rules. There are five that are new SDTM rules. Another five that are applicable to both SDTM and SEND. And then 20 new, 23 new rules for SEND only. You don't have to try to read these quickly. The slides will be made available. This is kind of just for reference for you to see. Um, but again, you'll be able to, to view these slides after the webinar. And then just a note, for the SDTM, the new SDTM rules, three of these rules have no publisher ID because there are no corresponding CDIS conformance rules for medical devices. And then there are, four of the send rules that have no publisher ID because there's no corresponding CDIS conformance rule, and no business, no FDA business rule. So we imagine that the FDA business rules will likely be updated in the near future to account for that. There were some changes to publisher ID for 11 rules. We added See this conformance rule IDs to existing rules. Two are due to new rules added in CDIS send conformance rules version 
a rule already existed that covered this. So the ID was added as a reference to, to those two rules. The same situation for seven STTM rules, STTM IG conformance rules 2.0 added new rules, but we had rule, there were rules that covered these already. So again, we just added the publisher ID. One is due to a rule being deprecated in CETA set STTM IG conformance rules version 2.0. And then one appears to just to have been a mistake, uh, missed conformance rule ID. So that has been corrected. Messages were updated for three rules. They're listed here just for reference. Um, there's no meaningful, real meaningful change to these. It's just kind of a reformatting of the message, kind of um, just to make them more consistent with the format of other validation rule messages. Fourteen rules had the description updated. Again, I provided them here for reference. You don't have to try to quickly read these. The slides will be available after the webinar. But again, for these, the differences are really that um, the descriptions were kind of just reformatted. Grammar was fixed, minor typos adjusted, but no actual real meaningful changes mostly. There were changes to STTM IG rule assignments. The first one listed, SD1138 derive flag equal to Y when original result value is populated. This was added or assigned to all STTM IG versions. The reason is it just appears to have been mistakenly unassigned previously, so this was fixed. Rule assignments were removed for a few rules. SD1259, invalid value for set code. The assignments were removed from SDTM IG 3.1.2, 3.1.3, 3 and 3.2. The reason for this is that set code variable exists only in SDTM IG 3.3. Therefore, this rule is not applicable to other versions, other previous versions of the SDTM IG. SD0063 and SD0063A, checking for variable labels. This was removed in SDTM IG 3.3. The reason here is that the publication of SDTM IG 3.3 matching the variable labels is no longer part of conformance. There were some changes to send IG rule assignments. The first one here, SD1118, neither start date, DTC, or STDY are populated. This was added or signed to, to send IG version 3.1. The reason is just, again, that it appears to have been mistakenly unassigned. So this was corrected. And then a few rule assignments were removed. For SD1008, CODTC is populated when comment is a child record of another domain. The assignment was removed from SendIG version 3.1. The reason is that the corresponding CDIS conformance rule does not apply to SendIG version 3.1 or later versions. So this was corrected. And then the last one, SD1138, derived flag equal to yes when original result value is populated. This was removed, the assignment was removed from SendIG version 
The reason is that original result can be populated and send findings domains when the deride flag equal to yes. This is different from SDTM. Okay, now, how can you be sure that you're compliant with the new version of the FDA validator rules, version 1.6? If you're an enterprise user, recommend that you always accept the latest deployments of enterprise and that you always use the latest available regulatory engines. So here I have a screenshot of the configuration screen in Enterprise for setting up a data package. This is where you would select the validation engine to use. You see I have a check mark next to the FDA engine and then a, um, a red X next to the FDA legacy engine. You always wanna make sure that you're using the, the latest agency engine for FDA. Um, you do not wanna use the, leg the legacy FDA engine. This is provided just for reference. You can see that we do have a P21 engine at the top. Um, this engine is recommended to be used for ongoing studies. What it does is it will show you the issues for FDA, PMDA, and then we have rules for custom standards and CT in enterprise. And then in this engine, this P21 engine, will run all of those rules and show you all of those issues. So this is a good engine to run while the, the study is ongoing, just so that you see everything that, that might fire for your study. But as a good practice, we recommend as you approach your submission to an agency that you switch to the and just agency specific validation engines. So you would switch to FDA. You'd still see the same FDA validation issues. You would just only see the FDA issues. You wouldn't see any of that extra stuff that you would see in P21. If you were to use a legacy FDA engine, you would see warning messages you know, on various screens, and I posted some of those screenshots at the bottom. So in the package details, the submission checklist, and then even in the validation report, if you were to export that out of enterprise, you would see red warnings telling you you need to revalidate using the latest engine. If you don't do that, um, you, will, you won't see the exact same validation results as the agency will see. So don't ignore those warning messages. If you're, an, if you're a community user, similar, you just always select the FDA engine, the latest FDA engine. You do not select the FDA legacy. That's only provided for reference. It should not be used for submission. If you were to use an FDA legacy engine or just an engine that's out of date, you would receive in the validation report a message, a warning message saying that you're using an incompatible engine. So if that happens, you want to make sure that you're using the latest FDA engine. So you make sure that you're using the latest version of Pinnacle 21 community and that you're connected to the internet. Rerun a validation and then you'd select the latest one. If you have any trouble with any of this, if you're an enterprise user, contact your customer success manager for us to help you with that. Or um, if you're a community user, we don't provide support like we do for enterprise. So you could post a question on the, the community forum on our website. And then finally, once you do validate, just a quick note, um, this is the process. This is how you would handle your validation issues. Um, this is a section from the FDA study data technical conformance guide describing what you should do. So they say the sponsors should evaluate their study data before submission against the conformance rules. We recommend that you validate as soon and as often as you can. The sooner you validate, the more likely you are to be able to fix validation issues. 
the longer you wait to validate, the more um, impact it has, those updates have, and you, you might be less willing to make those. So we definitely recommend validate as soon and as often as you can. And then once you do, you wanna fix as many of those issues as you can. The ones that you just can't fix, you need to provide a clear, meaningful explanation for every issue that you don't fix in the reviewer's code. Okay, now I will answer a few questions. Okay, first question, can you email me a copy of your slides? We will post these slides on our website. We have a section of our website. It's under um, the blog section where we post, we'll post the slides for the webinar, the recording of the webinar. And hopefully any questions that we are unable to answer, we'll be able to provide um, answers to some of those as well on that site. So we, we won't email you a copy, but um, this, this will be posted to our website after the webinar. Okay, another question, do we need to switch to the newest validation engine if we started on a previous validation engine for an ongoing study? Yes, um, the recommendation is to definitely always switch to the latest agency validation engine. Even if your submission is um, very soon and everything is kind of locked, you still want to validate using the latest engine. It's always better to see exactly what the agency will see and not have any surprises. We understand that you, you might see some differences. You might see some new validation issues or even some issues might not be displayed anymore with the new engine. If we have fixed a false positive, for example, or refined the rule anymore. But again, those differences, you absolutely wanna be aware of those differences. It's always good to explain every issue that the agency will see in your reviewer's guide, even if you're unable to fix it. Um, if that's the explanation that you just, the engine came out too late for you to fix, then that's the explanation. But it, it's better than not seeing the issues that the agency will see and not explaining them in the reviewer's guide. So yes, always use the latest engine for submission. Okay, next question, how often does the FDA plan to update their validation rules, the validator rules? Um, it seems to be about every year is the goal. The previous release um, was about a year and a half ago, so that can fluctuate a little bit, but um, it seems to be every year or so. Okay, next question. Why isn't severity included in the FDA validator rules anymore? So this is not new to version 1.6. This, this was, in, this was um, changed in a previous version of the validator rules. So CDIS does not provide any severities for their conformance rules. And the FDA business rules don't have any severities either. So FDA validator rules do not publish severity. We have kept that for our enterprise um, clients. It is available. We have changed it. It's no longer called severity. We call it type. These are um, values of error warning notice. We know a lot of companies might have um, might use these values in their processes of um, managing their validation issues. So again, that's kept for our enterprise users. So you'll see it. It's just the name has changed from severity to type. Uh, next question, are there any differences in requirements between CEDAR and CBER? Well, there are differences in guidance that you need to be aware of when preparing your data and documents for submission. For example, if you're working on, on a vaccine study for that's being submitted to CBER, they do have guidance on how that vaccine data should be represented, especially reactogenicity 
example. So um, you do need to be aware of the different agency requirements um, or guidance for preparing your data. For the actual validation, it's, it's the same. You would use the FDA, the, the latest FDA engine and um, disposition the, the validation issues accordingly. And I think I'll stop there. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Any questions that I did not get to, I apologize. Um, again, we'll try to provide answers and post them on the website with the slides and the recording of this webinar. And again, thank you everyone for joining and have a great day.